Hi guys, let's get started. We're using a 20 ounce skinny straight AF tumbler from Mother Tumbler. Um, and I got the pre-sanded one, so if you need to, you need to sand your tumbler first. I'm using painter's tape to just kind of mark off half of my tumbler. We're going to be applying vinyl to half of this, but I'm going to do that after I epoxy it a few times because it just keeps the vinyl cleaner for me with less coats of epoxy on it. So now we're going to attempt to paint an ombre with adhesive apothecaries pigmented glues. Um, I'm not very good at this, but honestly, you couldn't really tell through the glitter, so I wouldn't do this with like pastels because pastels like are translucent, but this worked. Now I'm going in with Savage Mix from PDB Creative Studio. It's a multi-size mix. This is my first time using it, but honestly, it matches the vinyl and decal so well. Um, and it's honestly a very beautiful glitter. Um, so I have heavy coverage on the bottom, and then I start to sprinkle it into the middle. And now we're going in with Amore from PDB. Heavy coverage, and then I start to sprinkle that into Savage Mix. And then we're going to sprinkle that towards the top of the tumbler where we're going to use Coachella from pdb so these are all uh, multi-size mixes and they really all blended very well um i painted that top part lilac because i wanted the coachella to pull a little more purple and it did so if you're using coachella try and get your base um to match as best as you can now i'm going to peel the painter's tape and i'm going to spray this with a coat of loctite spray glue it'll just kind of help keep that glitter um, in place and not move around. After the Loctite is dry, I'm gonna take Adhesive Apothecary's Binding Potion. Um, this really just helps lay your chunky glitter fat flat and seal it. Um, it does dry clear, and after it's dry, you know, you won't be able to move that glitter around anymore, so I really love this product. And I'm just using one of the brushes I got in my PDB Creative Studio art box, and I do let my binding potion dry for a couple hours. I want to say I let this dry for like three hours until it was full fully clear and like it wasn't wet to the touch anymore after that is all dry we can go in and start epoxying I literally love this stuff so much All right, so I applied two coats of epoxy to this tumbler. I did give you a little preview right here, although I just moved my office around, so my phone mount isn't really set up to record <laughs> near my epoxy station anymore, but I put one coat on it, let it dry, and then I put another coat on it. After those two coats were dry, we're ready to apply our vinyl, but if you look closely, this really needs um, a good sand, so I'm gonna go out and sand with my electric sander. And this is what it looks like. So I'm going to clean that up with a baby wipe. And now that that's all smooth, we can apply our vinyl. It's really important that if you're going to follow this technique, that your vinyl is being applied on a smooth surface um, rather than applying it before you even glitter. Um, like I said, this just keeps my vinyl clean. Sometimes I struggle with air bubbles. So I like to put my vinyl on, you know, right before my last coat of epoxy. So right now I'm taking my 12 by 12 inch vinyl and I'm just marking off how wide I need it. I'm not using my Cricut or anything. I'm doing this all by hand. Um, and then I will trim it a little bit more and then we can place it right on our tumbler. Listen, I like to just peel off the backing completely and go for it. <laughs> um, so take your time, um, smooth out any air bubbles along the way. And as you can see, we cut that pretty perfect but we do need to trim the top and the bottom so I'm taking the bottom and I'm trimming it with my exacto knife um, and then I'm using my cutting edge tool and then I'm going to trim a f quite a bit off the top too I'm going to be applying a drip to this so you're not going to see that stainless steel that um, is showing right there all right, so now I'm taking more painter's tape and I'm covering up the bottom of my tumbler I decided to airbrush my handle and the bottom of my tumbler just black. So I wanted the bottom of the tumbler to like accent the handle. So I just used my airbrush machine on that and the handles from Dimensional Drinks, it's a 3D printed handle. Um, we're gonna be using that in a minute. But before I do that, I'm gonna apply some striping. I did choose to do this on my turner because I didn't wanna damage um, the paint that I put on the bottom of the cup. Airbrush paint is pretty fragile, so I didn't want it to be banging around. Um, I already had this final pre-cut um, it's just like a steel blue and then a holographic purple. I'll try and find the links and put them below. Um, the super small ones are like 0.05 
um, thickness, and then the bigger ones are 0.2. So now we're going to apply our decal. Make sure you don't put this over a sanded base. As you can see, I'm avoiding the areas that I sanded because it'll be foggy um, if you put it over the sanded parts. I'm taking a little bit more of binding potion on my holographic vinyl because if you know, you know, holographic vinyl tends to lift. So I'm just taking extra precautions and sealing that in. All right, now we're gonna apply our handle. These are 3D printed handles. I already airbrushed it black and I want two coats of epoxy over this handle so that it's super strong. So right now I'm taking UV resin from PDB and I'm placing it exactly where I want and then I'm gonna turn my UV lamp on and let it dry. Super easy. I like this technique because if you put the handle on later, um, it's just easier to work with. So, um, like I said, I did apply two coats of epoxy over this tumbler. I think two coats would just have a stronger hold over that handle rather than just one. I did also add a little bit of a sparkle additive in my epoxy so that the handle in the bottom would have a little bit of sparkle to it. Also, I'm using the amazing Clearcast Epoxy from Michaels. I had to buy it in a pinch one day, and honestly, I really love it, like, a lot. Make sure you torch any air bubbles away, and you get the handle really well, but try not to let too much epoxy collect on the handle, if that makes sense, um, because then air bubbles can start to form. All right, let's do our drip and then we're almost done. So like I said, my cup right now is ready to go. Like it has two coats of epoxy on it. It's fully cured, but I do want to add a drip. So I'm mixing equal parts of part A and part B um, of CCDIY Facet. And then I'm adding a little bit of their dispersion colors in it and a little bit of mica powder from PDB to give it a little bit of a shimmer. I do want to say this now. If you're not putting any charms or anything on your drip, you don't have to seal your drip if you're using epoxy. So if I was putting charms on this, it would need another coat of epoxy at the end to seal in those charms. But because we're just doing a drip and the rest of our cup is smooth, this will be our final step. So I'm mixing that really well. And then I like to use Nice and Thick from CCDIY as well. You can also use cornstarch, but I will say that cornstarch tends to make the black look more gray so I don't love to use cornstarch um, and I add quite a bit of this probably like four tablespoons and I just mix it up until it is nice and thick I don't like my drips to be super runny um, this step will take some practice it does take a while to kind of determine when your mixture is too thin or too thick so I let it sit for about 10 minutes after I just showed you how thin it was. And now I'm putting it on a popsicle stick and I am just scraping it along my top. I don't like to glob it because I don't want it to drip down too far. Um, I kind of just, like I said, scrape it on the top and I let it drip down itself. I am just making sure that that stainless steel up where I put the vinyl on is fully covered. I literally love drips. <laughs> Anytime like I messed up the top of a cup, like maybe I cut my vinyl crooked, I had a drip over it. Look how perfect. So after that was dry, we're gonna take our Dremel and clean up that rim because listen, I'm messy. I am so messy when I do my drips. So Dremel to the whole thing because you wanna have a nice smooth rim anyways. I'm gonna clean that up. And here we go. If you have any questions, let me know. I will link everything below. And thank you guys for watching.